This is tutorial 19 on how to create a plane and plane maker using Blender. This is Blender part 5. And this is the tutorial I think many of you have been waiting for. This is the one where we're going to start making a 3D cockpit. And I felt it was necessary to give you the background and the information that we've gone through so far in these past tutorials. But now we're going to use what we've learned to actually build a 3D cockpit with moving instruments and everything. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start out with that file where I had imported the plane from Plane Maker. And if you don't know how to do that, then you might want to go back a couple of tutorials and see how it was done. Uh, we need this plane here as a reference to place the cockpit object properly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press the spacebar to add a cube. And the cube is where we're going to have our little cockpit object. So the cube will be placed by default on the cursor. And when you add objects, they automatically get added in edit mode. Now you'll find there's a difference between moving objects around while they're in edit mode and moving them around while they're in object mode. I'll illustrate my point. If I grab this object now, it's like moving the entire cube and all the snapping and all the rules apply that I've taught you in the past couple of tutorials. I can hit control to snap. But the difference between moving an object when I have all the vertices selected in edit mode versus if I move that same object when I have the object selected in object mode is that the center of the object moves along with the object. That will become relevant. The center of the object is that pink dot you see in the middle of that white square. We will get back to that later. For right now, just let me make you aware of it, and we will deal with that in a little more detail in later tutorials. For now, I'm just going to move this whole cube in object mode over to where the cockpit area will be. I will snap it to the nearest unit by using control, and then left click to confirm. The airplane is getting in my way at this point, so I'm going to right-click it and move it by clicking on the M key to the fourth layer. So the plane can stay in a hidden layer as a reference for later usage, but right now I'm only interested in this cube. Okay, so what we need to do with this cube is we need to assign it the texture of the panel that we're going to be using in Plane Maker, because that's what makes this thing animated. So we can tab into edit mode. I'm going to place the camera by pressing 1 so that we're looking at it from the back. And now what I need to do next is I need to flip the normals so that instead of looking at the cube from the outside, we're going to look at the inside walls of the cube. This is best explained a little later, but let me just do it now so that you know how to do it. You hit the W key and then you say flip normals from this pop-up menu here. I can activate something called the draw normals. And basically, it will draw little blue lines on the walls to indicate in which direction those walls are pointing. Now, you might be thinking, why is it important to know which way the walls are pointing? I'm going to flip the normals back outside just so you see what happens. Flip normals. And this is, although it looks very similar, the point of what actually happens will be illustrated once we have this cube textured. But you can see this blue line is now pointing outwards. And if I flip the normals, they're pointing inwards. And the texture we're going to apply is going to be the panel's texture that is fitted with all the instruments we need for flight. I loaded up the image via this menu here, Open, and now it's in my list of available options here. And I would just select it, go Panel.png, and now how do I get this panel to wrap itself around this 3D object? Well, we use the U key, and it gives us the uh, different options of how to unwrap this cube. You can, for example, say Unwrap, and it will cause each of these faces to spread itself across the entire graphic here. And this is what it will look like. This is an example of the texture applied in a fairly random fashion. It has its uses, but not for our purpose right here. So let's go back to the number one key, and let's try unwrapping it again. Now, this time we're using a different algorithm. We'll use cube projection. Wow, what's the logic behind this? Well, we'll get behind the logic of all of this a little later, but just so you see, and here it becomes evident that the walls of the cube are one-sided and we've told the cube to only show us the inside face and the outside face remains invisible. This is what we've accomplished with the flipping the normals. You see this looks like a more solid cube and if we flip the normals we have it uh, pointing towards the inside. This basically just allows us to stand inside the cube and see it textured properly. 
Okay, I want to try a different algorithm. So I'm going to say project from view. Okay, yeah. This pretty much means that this face that we're looking at is going to be projected onto this image. But I still don't like the fact that it's not occupying the whole image. So what I'll do is I'll try one more time. Project from view in parentheses bounds. So what this will do is, is it'll stretch the entire size of the face across the entire image. This is the part of the cube that faces forward, the same as the flight direction. Now there's one more thing I want to do to this cube. It doesn't necessarily have to be done, but it will help us actually look out the front windscreen. While we're in this editing mode, and you can access the editing mode by hitting either F9 or this button right here, look for Texture Face tab. And once you have this Texture Face tab enabled, you'll see a button down here called Alpha. And this button will allow me to render whatever is transparent in this image. It'll help it be transparent also on this cube. Now, whatever face is currently active is the one that's going to get this feature. But I want to apply it to all the faces so that this here also becomes transparent. So I have to hit the copy button in order to make this feature available to all these faces of the cube. All right, so now we're ready with this cockpit object to export it to be used by X-Plane. Now comes the part where we have to really be careful also how we name this object file. I don't know if I've been clear enough on this, but the way the Blender export script works is it'll name the object file exactly the same way as you have named the Blender file. So I have to save this Blender file actually as a file that will be recognized as a cockpit object in PlaneMaker. The naming convention for cockpit objects is the name of the plane, so ERJ140, and then underscore, and then cockpit. So if, after I've saved this, if I use the script to export the cockpit blend as an object file, then I will have the same title, and it's going to show up in the same directory as where we've saved this blend file. So let me go ahead and save it. And now I can go ahead and export it with the export script. And let's see what X-Plane says to this new 3D cockpit. And in X-Plane, let's try to activate the 3D cockpit view with the control O. And lo and behold, we have the makings of a 3D cockpit. And you can tell that there's these numbers are actually working. If you look at these engine dials, and I move the scroll wheel forward to accelerate, we also see that these knobs and dials and buttons and everything is working just simply by virtue of the fact that this panel texture was applied to this cube successfully. Now notice we have the cube textured also in the rear, which is all the wrong way around and stuff like that. But this just goes to show that the texture that was used to create the 2D cockpit is actually mapped across this cube and is now visible in 3D. And now you see also why I uh, flipped the, the faces of the cube the moment I move out of the cockpit then I can see that the face is vanished and I'm able to see through to the panel right there. So what we've done is we've applied the cockpit texture that was used to make this cockpit. We've applied it to the cube. We've given the cube some transparency and we've set the stage to now continue working on this cockpit object to make it a precision cockpit that will make our plane look so much better from the inside. Now this again, this is only the beginning phases. We've just proven the concept that you can texture an object to have all the uh, functional instruments in the cockpit on display. So that's all I wanted to prove with this exercise. In the next couple of tutorials, I'm going to actually show you how you can build the geometry of this cockpit and make it all slick. And in the process, we're really going to ramp up the learning curve for Blender. So at the end of the day, I think you'll be pretty good at using Blender. And if you've been able to follow along this far, congratulations, you're doing well. And if not, if you're just interested in flying this plane already, uh, you can download a free version without a 3D cockpit of it from xplane.org. And if you want to have the final version, you're going to have to wait until I'm done this tutorial series, and then you're going to be able to buy this plane as payware from the xplane.org store. This is my way of supporting my work. I'm offering these tutorials for free, and anybody who manages to follow along and build their own plane, they deserve it for free. And whoever has difficulty following along or just simply wants to fly this plane already, they'll be able to support me by purchasing this plane from the online store.
Next tutorial, I'm going to go into more detail on modeling the actual cockpit and building it out to insane levels of detail. I hope you stick around for that. Thank you.